one batch, two batch, penny and dime. What is up, Nerf Nation? I'm Naptown Nerf, and today we're going to be modding the Nerf Rival Kronos. But I don't think we're going to mod just one. We're going to mod two of them. I know I haven't reviewed the Phantom Core version, but my Deadpool version is basically going to give you all the information you need. This paint job is cool also. Not quite as involved, obviously, as the Deadpool version. A little plain on this side. It just really has the rival in the Phantom Core. But it's still very cool looking. I love the white and black. There we go. Number two. All right. So let's go ahead and flip this thing over. We'll just start with one for now. Flip it over. Undo the screws and put them into our tote here so we don't lose anything then go from there all right and explosion <laughs> so there we go that is our catch mechanism there and that's what retains the spring so this just goes right in here. It kind of exploded, obviously, but it'll just go right into there. It's kind of, this is actually under some pre-compression, uh, pre so it may have a tendency to do that. We'll remove the spring here. And it's a pretty beefy spring. I mean, that's definitely gonna be usable for something else down the road, so we will keep that. So if you just want to do a simple mod, you can just replace the spring and put everything back together and you're going to get much better FPS. Now a lot of people have been putting K26 in there, cut down obviously, but there's other springs I've heard that work, like the Apollo spring is an upgrade. I'm not sure how much of a performance upgrade that is. And obviously for a pistol like this to be effective in a war scenario, you want to be able to prime it pretty easily. So that's something to think about when you're upgrading the spring we are also going to take a look and see if we can make this hold six rounds instead of five so i've gone ahead and modded the internals on one of the blasters so i can kind of feel out and get it kind of where i want it and then i'll be able to better show you guys what i did when i do it the second time around at this point there's really no going back but there are a few issues. Uh, one, if you plan on putting a K26 spring in it, which will get you right around 140 FPS, and this thing shoots awesome, but it is very, very difficult to prime, and I highly recommend getting some sort of priming, 3D printed pri priming grip uh, help for the rail, because without that, it's gonna be very difficult. If you like, ease of prime I think I would go with a different spring than a K26 the other thing I've done is I've made this a six round capacity so it can hold six rival rounds we'll go ahead and put six in there so hold six rounds this one kind of pokes out here but then you will go ahead and I'll pretend like I'm priming the blaster or putting one into the breech there and it goes into the breech and it kind of squishes into here but it works just fine the one thing I've noticed and this didn't happen right away but after I used the blaster a few times it would happen most of the time and I'm trying to figure out exactly what's going on and if there's a way I can fix it but let's see if it works or not this time around but I'll go ahead and pull it out and oh. So this time it did work. It went ahead and put the ball into the breech and pushed things up. Sometimes it likes to get caught out here and it just doesn't want to quite push it in when you, that fifth round anyways. Once it gets to this point though, it's fine. So it's a little bit inconsistent. So if you want super consistency and you want that reliability, I would recommend not doing this. All right, let's get going on number two. And Actually, this time, I'm gonna prime it first. Boom. 
everything is contained right there. Now, when you release this, don't make sure you're holding on to it or it'll just fly across the room. So there we go. That will keep it from exploding on you when you open it. So that's a good trick. So I just used some of these sticky pads. I got these, I think, at Target. These were like the perfect size to fit in there, and I just put two of them in there, and it removes that dead space and adds a little more padding. This does have a hard rubber padding, kind of, but it's pretty hard, and I think that that, you know, just might as well put that in there if you can. It worked perfectly, so. All right, now you need some K26 or a better spring than this would be one that's custom made for this and I'm assuming that some will be made eventually but as of me doing this there are none I did try the Apollo spring in there but this really only doesn't it probably gains about 5 10 FPS it gets you around it gets you right at 100 FPS so if you're looking for 100 FPS and easy to prime Apollo spring works really well. It's like the perfect length. It's probably exactly the length we will be making this K26, which is about 12 links. So with that being said, let's cut this thing. So we're going to make this thing hold six rounds and this mod is pretty easy. You basically need to carve out this area quite a bit uh, to allow for it to push further up and the barrel will be sitting here so you have to make room so that this will have space and then we will also remove this nub here. This is something I saw Mr. Nathan do. This is not my idea. And I believe he got it from, oh, I forget his name. I'll put it up on the screen. So I think it was he was the first one to do it. It's very simple, so I figured, why not? Let's do it. So here we go. that's pretty much what you're going for you obviously just you got to cut a lot away but you don't want to really go more than that or any more than you have to and obviously you just kind of have to test with your barrel in there and make sure that there's room for it to go around it so pretty cool and then just remove the nub in there with some side cutters and it should be set all right so I'm gonna make myself a little loading door in the jam door because I don't really like having the jam door there. This makes it a lot harder to actually load your blaster, so you could either just remove it completely, or if you want to make it look a little bit nicer, you can just cut out a nice little loading hole in your jam door. There is also a 3D printed file that you can download on Thingiverse and print your own if you have access to a 3D printer, and I do believe he, he's also selling it on Etsy. I figured I could just cut out a hole and, and it would do the exact same thing, so that's what I'm gonna do. So just like I did it with Sub-Zero, I'm going to remove this with some 800 grit and make this thing completely white.
Okay, so I went ahead and trimmed this down just a touch more because I felt like it's a little bit easier to prime with about 11 and 3 quarters lengths instead of 12. So I did that, tried to flatten down the edges the best I could, and I slightly removed a little bit of material from all four sides here just so the spring would, you know, slide over that with ease. And then when we put it back into the plunger tube, we want to make sure that this notch right here is facing up. So we'll get that there. There we go. And then I'm leaving the trigger lock or bolt or the plunger tube bolt sled, I guess, but there's no bolt sled on this, uh, which is really cool. Actually, the way this blaster is designed is amazing. It's probably the best designed Springer that I've ever worked on. The catch mechanism is awesome. I just really like how they built this blaster and I hope they use this in future builds. So we'll go ahead and put things back together. Everything's back in place. And don't forget this piece, which is what allows your blaster to deprime. Connects to this little switch here and that will allow it to deprime. I recommend keeping that in. So we'll go ahead and lock this down. Sometimes you have to tease this back in, but it should fit in without too much issue now. So that's nice. All right. And then I've separated the lengths of screws. There are two tiny, tiny ones there. Those will go in at the end along with one that's slightly shorter than the rest. And this is important to take out because that's the one that goes up here into your the top rival rail slash what connects into this so you don't want that one to be a long one and you don't want to lose the small one when you're putting everything else together so sorted that out and let's go ahead and lock it down and we'll go ahead and put these in now and this just covers up the gap but it's easier to put them in now than before because this kind of holds it on there we go and then that make sure that's that boss is in that hole there and then we can put the top part on just like that everything should fit in very nicely and then we can go ahead and lock this down with that short screw going in the top part two of the normal link screws going in the back and then these go in here one on each side very very tiny ones right in there Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna try something different and put some vinyl logos on these guys and make these some sweet dual wielding Punisher blasters. When I first saw that they were coming out with the white Phantom Core line, I immediately wanted to turn these into Punisher blasters similar to the Deadpool version. I thought that was really cool what they did with the Deadpool Kronos edition and I wanted to do a similar idea but using the Punisher another awesome Marvel character so let's go ahead and see if we can get these guys on here That's a little bit tricky because of all the little nooks and crannies and crevices you have to go over. It's not a smooth surface, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. But I feel like that turned out pretty darn well. Now we got to work on the other side. All right, you guys, the Punisher pistols are complete. We have one batch, two batch, penny and dime. And I want to thank my fiance, Jill, for doing the handiwork on here. She, uh, we just used a paint pen and she just went to town. Uh, really cool detailing, I think. Kind of looks like it's been carved in there, like it's carved into a jail cell wall or something. I think that's really cool and fitting for the Punisher. So we got the logos on this side. I think if I did this again, I'd go slightly bigger with the logos, but uh, pretty happy with how that turned out. They went on very nicely and I definitely will look to use vinyl logos in the future. 
we have the Grijas gears priming handles on here and that is a must if you're gonna go K26 in my opinion and this gives us the ability to do wield pretty easily so that's pretty cool easy to prime back and we'll go ahead and load up our 12 rounds in there into our custom loading holes all right loaded up there and hopefully they work well but I don't think I would do the six round mod again if I was to do this mod again and I definitely will be modding more Kronos in the future. We'll go ahead and put some shots over the chronograph here. 126, 137, 127, 135. So it seems like one batch, two batch is shooting a little harder than the other. Throw on 31. 136, 134, 142, 135, also 135, 130, 129. So pretty darn good performance out of the Kronos there. Very happy with that. First ball here is just short of 70 one feet we have one here just around 71 feet trying to make sure I get them all here there's one here right at 78 this one's basically right at 78 this one's about at 80 this one's a little past 81 we have some over here these are about 79 feet so this one's at 86 and we have one all the way down here past where I roped out. This one's probably close to 100 feet. So these things definitely have some pop. I'm very happy with the performance of these things. I absolutely love the Kronos. It is becoming one of, if not the most popular Nerf pistol. And honestly, I'll have to say this. I think this is probably one of the best blasters Nerf has ever made in terms of design and function, in terms of stock performance. All right, well, my GoPro decided to shut off mid-sentence, but these pistols are awesome. I will definitely be modding more Kronos in the future. I absolutely love how this mod turned out. I think they turned out awesome. I probably will revisit this and do a more tactical black edition, maybe with some white paint. That could be cool. We will see. But I think these are pretty awesome, and this is definitely something I can use at the Nerf War. I used this actually at our last Nerf War and absolutely rocked pistol rounds with these things. I mean, they're they're pretty cool, guys. And I just want to show one thing. When you pad that plunger head, the dry firing isn't nearly as bad. So highly recommend doing that. Hope you enjoyed this Nerf mod slash guide. And don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. Smash that like button. Please subscribe. And as always, peace out.